What is up? My whiskers, my whisker gang, my whisker gang on top. What is up, baby? It's back with another banger. Y'all already know Whisker Chan is back with another banger. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this. Guys, in a couple of days, or should I say two weeks, we are getting Ganyu. Now, this probably has crossed your mind. You're probably, actually, everybody probably just said, you know what, bro, it's too much going on. The primal dude is about to be broke. I don't even care. But, for those who still do care, and for those who are confused, yes, we are going over this video for the mere fact of should you get your Ganyu still, or should you get Hu Tao, right? Now, this is going to be a tough decision, because, you know, uh, it's it's like a month apart, but at the same time, you have to think about Primal Gems and how hard those are to get in the first place. But anyway, like I'm saying, who should you get? Who should you prioritize? Like, I mean, this game is up to preference, really, but also dealing with skill and with multipliers. Let's go ahead and get into that. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. Join the subscribe button grind to 2,100, baby. Y'all are on, y'all are insane on the grind right now because y'all are like, we're blowing up, baby. Y'all already know how this go. Anyway, also hit that bell down below so you can get all my notifications and you can see all my videos that I post daily. And also smash the like button down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. First things first, I want to go over Ganyu. There were some changes to Ganyu, if you did not know. Um, so we're going to actually go over those. Y'all already know what she is. Five star, you know, cryo uh, bow user. And also, these are this is our stat progression. Um, honestly, when you, when you originally, when we originally saw Ganyu, when we originally saw stat progression, she did not have the extra additional crit damage. Like, you know, you regularly start with 50%, but this is just like Hu Tao. She's getting 38.4% additional crit damage to her stat progression, which is extremely viable. It used to be 38.4% cryo damage, which made it extremely insane for the fact that she's going to be dealing tons of cryo damage, especially on her normal attack for how it works. So anyway, this is, this is her stat progression. It changed from 38.4% cryo damage to 38.4% crit damage, which is extremely good still so I am not stressing that at all definitely puts up for a crit honestly I feel like this is better for the fact that how the four piece blizzard strayer set works it's gonna make her do more crit damage so I take that I really take that right there especially uh, considering that I already have a crit damage build ready for her so we're gonna be doing tons of crit damage because of this and we're also gonna have tons of crit rate because of the four piece Bl uh, blizzard strayer set so I'm definitely cool with that definitely not uh not not complaining or anything and our base HP is pretty low though compared to um two tiles is really low and also our defense is really low but this unit is a sniper unit this unit is not meant for close combat okay so anyway let's go over some things about her we have our attacks as you do know she has the charge level one which fires off an icy arrow that deals cryo damage right and then we have the charge level two which fires off a frost flake arrow that deals cryo damage the frost flake arrow will bloom after hitting its uh hitting its target and deal aoe cryo damage so what does that mean? Once you shoot this, right? You you have a you have an option. You could charge a little bit, get ice on it, shoot, and it'll just do an icy arrow that does cryo damage. Or you could charge until it has this effect that burst out, and then after you see that effect burst out, that's when you let go, and that's a charge level two, which will do the AOE cryo damage uh, with the frost flake that arrow that booms. You know what I'm saying? So that is very unique. And here are the multipliers for that. The regular aim shot can go up to, let me scroll over a little bit. The regular aim shot can go up to 117.3%, which is not bad at all. The aim shot charge level 1 can go up to 294%. This is level 15, so if we go level 10, make sure we're on level 10. So level 10 right here, uh, charge level 1 is 223, which is still really, really good. The frost flake arrow damage, once you do uh, the charge level 2, basically, is 230.4%, which is a lot, right? And the frost flake arrow bloom damage is 391 which is almost 400 percent and that is level that was that this is level 10 level 10 talent right okay and we have our plunge damage which doesn't really matter because we're really focused on the charge level one as well as the charge level two and what they can do and the damage they can do and this right here you think about it the frost flake arrow damage right for charge level two is 243 right and then no not 243 230.4 at level 10 right and then you get frost flake arrow bloom damage which is 391 you add those numbers together right for those damages and then add that she has crit damage as well as add that she's going to have tons of crit rate 
for applying the, you know, cryo status or freezing her enemy with the four piece blizzard strayer set, right? So you're going to be doing tons of damage because you're going to be critting consistently since you're applying cryo all the time. You're going to get that additional 20% crit rate as well as if you freeze the enemy, uh, you're going to get an additional 20%. So you have 40% crit rate and that's going to be insane for Ganyu for sure. I feel like definitely you're going to be critting so much for big numbers and I can't wait to see what she can actually do. Uh, so anyway, we have the trail of the Keelan, right? This leaves a single isolus behind, Ganyu dashes backward. This is similar to, like, I'm not even gonna say it anymore, actually. This is Ganyu, okay? Ganyu dashes backwards, shunning all impurity and dealing AoE, cryo damage, and this continuously taunts all enemies. So this is a taunt, which is really good for the fact that she is a sniper, so taunting enemies to go to something so that she could aim her bow without them, like, continuously rushing her is really, really good. And also the Endurance is based off her HP, which you shouldn't max out her HP just for that unless you want her as a sub DPS or something so that you could, like, continuously have something taunting the enemies. Uh, it's up to you, but honestly, you shouldn't do that. And because the duration is 6 seconds regardless, so I feel like this is... It's, a, it's not a lot of seconds, so you might as well not even like max too much out. And also, it blooms profusely when destroyed or once its duration ends, dealing AoE cryo damage. So, I mean, it depends on how you play the character. You have, you don't have to have tons of HP. You have HP, though, in general. And then, like, you know, once it blows up, it's going to do all that AoE cryo damage, which is what you, you really want, right? I mean, yeah, you want it to taunt your enemies, but you also want it to blow up to do that AoE cryo damage. Uh, the inherited HP, as you can see, from level 1 is 120, level 10 is 216, level 15 if you will. The character is 285%. Skill damage from level 1 is 132, and at level 10 is 237, and level 15 is 313, which is not bad. And then the duration is 6 seconds, the cooldown is 10 seconds. So you have, necess necessarily once this is out, you have, after it destroys or it, you know, it, the duration ends, you have a 4 second cooldown, and then you have this again, basically. Right? Because, you know the map. <laughs> anyway, we have Celestial Side, which is our Elemental Burst. This is basically where she coalesces Atmospheric Frost and Snow to summon a Sacred Cryo Pearl that exercises evil during its ability duration. The Sacred Cryo Pearl will continuously rain down shards of ice, striking opponents within an AoE and dealing AoE cryo damage. So this is it actually has a big, extremely big area of effect. It's, I think it's bigger than Albedo's or the exact size of Albedo's Elemental Skill once you put his Elemental Skill out. So that has a really big area of effect. And also, here's the ice shard damage per uh, shard, I guess. We go from level 1 to 70%, level 10 to 126, which is not bad. And level 15, which is 166.9% if you will. The character the duration is 15 seconds for this. Cooldown is 20 seconds, and the energy cost is 60. Now, like I said, there were some changes to the character. They changed our stat progression, and they also changed this right here. It used to be 80 cost energy cost but now they lowered it to 60 i think that they lowered it to 60 a while ago which is actually really beneficial really good for the character uh and also i'm pretty sure once you charge for level one and level two on her normal uh normal attack or slash charge attack you're going to get energy particles so once you get those energy particles back you'll be able to get your celestial shower pretty fast similar to how a child can charge his and you know do his debuff and once he does that he gets some energy particles back just like that so i feel like it's going to work just like that on ganyu and also another thing to note about this character is the fact that with the blizzard straight set the reason this character is so perfect for that is because of this passive right here which is undivided heart and this is what's going to make this character extremely good and this is what's going to make the new blizzard straight set you know actually useful and really pop off it's because of this after firing a frostbite arrow the crit rate of a subsequent frostbite arrow and their resulting bloom effect is increased by 20 percent guys so basically what the saying is you charge level two boom they're they're affected by cryo now they're affected by cryo so the blizzard straight set 20 percent kicks in right and then you fire the next one. Boom. The crit rate is increased by another 20% because of this passive. So it's 40% increased crit rate, but this only lasts for five seconds. So you have to do this extremely quick, right? Uh, so basically, you have 40% increased crit rate. If you freeze them, that'll be 60% increased crit rate. And that's not even counting your build that on your character. That's not counting your sub stats for crit rate. That's not counting your main stats for crit rate. So for sure, you already have 60% crit rate if you have a freeze comp and you also have the four piece blues destroyer set. And that is insane for the fact that she has 88.4% or in your terms, 38.4% additional crit damage to the kit. So she's going to be doing tons of damage, especially if you have a crit, if you have a crit damage build and you're going to have, you're already going to have enough crit rate. I feel like in my opinion, if you run a freeze comp with her, you're going to have enough crit rate because you're going to have at least, you're at least going to have 40 and that's not even to mention your sub stats, you know? So you're going to have 40% crit rate just from the fact that her passive works like that. And also the four piece blizzard straight set. As soon as you hit them with cryo, that's 20% increased crit rate right there. So I feel like that's going to be insane. She's going to be critting like crazy and it's going to be extremely fun to do. I have her set ready. I can't wait to see how she is like on the 15th. We are something for her. Y'all already know how this goes. 
and we're gonna we're gonna test her out and I'm actually gonna make a video for that since I have her sets ready I'm right now just gathering materials as well as you know level up materials enhance materials uh, anyway we have the harmony between heaven and earth which is celestial shower grants a 20% cryo damage bonus to active party members in the AoE now what I'm hoping is that once she does this it doesn't exclude her so once she's in there it gives her an additional 20% cryo damage bonus because if we get that 20% cryo damage bonus to her and then we have that crit rate and that crit damage it's just gonna smack for so much damage because she's she's gonna be dealing that cryo damage. So I feel like for sure I hope that this applies to her and doesn't exclude her like everything else does when they when, when like Sucrose does something. It's like oh yeah, it excludes her, but she's gonna do it. She's gonna buff the party. So I hope it doesn't do that. I hope she is in included with the twenty uh in the party members for the twenty percent additional cryo damage once she does her celestial shower. For the fact it, it also does last pretty long as you can see, it lasts fifteen seconds, guys. So it, while you're in there, you're gonna have twenty percent increased cryo damage bonus. I feel like that's gonna be very good especially if you have Ganyu you. you can use her as uh, definitely a main DPS if you want but you also use a, uh, her as a support so she's pretty flexible and yeah so that's really Ganyu I want to go over her Tao and then after that inevitably which you should summon for uh, or which you should save for really and why in my opinion and honestly it's just it's about preference really it's not it's not all that you know hard to think about who you want who do you like more? Who looks better to you? Because both units are good at the end of the day. It's literally about what you want. So anyway, let's go ahead and go over Hu Tao. Okay, here we have Hu Tao, guys. Let's go ahead and cut straight to the chase. Similar to our girl, Ganyu. Basically, she has a 38.4% uh, 38 additional crit damage to her 50, uh, 50, base 50%. And also, another thing to note about this character is that her base attack is really low. Now, you're probably, if you don't know, if you don't know, if you haven't watched any of my videos, if you haven't watched any videos about Hu Tao in general, well, she has low base attack for the fact that her crit damage is going to make up for that. As you can see, it goes up to 88.4%, which is 38.4%. And then you have the base HP, which is 15,000. You're probably saying, why is, uh, why is the base HP important if you don't know? Well, basically because this character scales off HP. And let's go ahead and go over that right now. So, as you can see right here, the attack increase on our elements of skill is... It, it goes based off the max HP. And uh, also, it has a debuff to it, which is called Blood Plum Perfume. And basically, once you hit an enemy with a, a heavy attack... This is going to basically give them this debuff that lasts for 8 seconds and ticks 2 times since every 4 seconds it's going to uh, proc, right? So if you're level 10, it's going to do 115.2% every 4 seconds. So it's going to it's gonna hit 2 times. This can be refreshed by hitting them again while you're in this activation form, which takes 30% of your HP if you did not know. Yeah, she has an activation. This is a transformation unit, just like similar to Child. So it's going to be pretty, pretty cool, right? And as you can see, th these are the descriptions and whatnot basically based on the maximum hp of hu tao when entering this state increases hu tao's attack power the attack power gain in this way is increased and can't exceed 300 percent of hu tao's basic power convert attack damage to fire element and the transfer uh the transformation of this element cannot be you know overridden by any elements of fusion basically uh heavy hits will apply the blood plum perfume fragrance effect to hit enemies and improve Tao's ability to resist interruptions right and like I said this procs for every four seconds and does the damage and as you can see right here it's gonna do a good amount of damage and you could keep doing this over and over that's additional damage plus your attack increase that you're gonna get once you activate uh, your form even though it's gonna cost you 30% HP I'm pretty sure that's of your max HP it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of HP I hope it's current really but if it's max HP it's gonna take a lot of HP each time but at the same time, you're getting a lot out of it. And at the same time, you're also getting your elemental burst. And also, if you did not know, the Blood Perm Perfume, yeah, like I said, it lasts 8 seconds. And then the duration of this form in general is six, uh, 9 seconds. And the cooldown 16 seconds, which is not bad at all. It's pretty balanced. It, it, it used to be 10 second duration with a uh, 15 second cooldown, which was actually pretty broken considering that you just have to wait 5 seconds to go in this form again. So, this is where Hu Tao makes up for all, all her HP that's going to be lost once you go into that activation. It's our elemental burst, right? Basically, as you can see, uh, wave the fiery soul causing a large area of fire element damage. Uh, element damage when hitting an enemy, the uh, or Hu Tao's health is restored based on the maximum health of Hu Tao. This effect works up to uh, up to five enemy hits. If Hu Tao's health is lower than or equal to 50% when the skill hits, it will cause higher damage and healing. So, why is it so good? I feel like the reason this is so good is because the lower your health, the more you're going to hit for. And also, the lower your health, the more you're going to heal for. So, it's a unit that you could play on the edge, or you could just play a normal unit. Because she does tons of damage without being low health. But when you go low health, she's basically entering god mode. I feel like she has a buff. That, that That's a buff to me. She's going to enter god mode, and she's going to just do tons of damage. Have that active. If you have the activation cost on, when you have low health as well. Or you use the activation cost to get low health. And then you do the low skill damage. 
that's going to literally smack because you have the attack increase as well as the blood plum perfume uh debuff on your enemy as well as you're going to smack for this low skill i mean low health skill damage which can go up to if you have level 15 which is a well 764 percent but if you're level 10 it is 617.44 percent which is a ton if you don't know so that is really good and also this uh if you just do regular damage goes from level 1 to 303 level 10 to 493 and then level 15 to 611.99 percent and also your regular hp that you're going to regenerate if you just in regular hp if you have max hp basically or if you're missing like a thousand hp out of 50k or something you're going to go for right here 6.28 at level 1 at level 10 is 10.2 you're going to regenerate and at level 15 you're going to regenerate 12.64 which is not bad at all and if you have low hp at level 1 you're going to regenerate 8.35 at level 10 is 13.6 and at level 15 is 16.85 percent and the cooldown is 15 seconds right and the energy cost is 60 why is this good? It's because I feel like the energy cost is pretty low considering that she's going to be in a form that's going to be able to get her elemental uh, or energy particles back pretty considerably fast. I feel like that in my opinion, this form right here, being able to put this out, you're going to get energy back really fast if you use it to the, uh, its fullest of its ability and also it's, it's just going to be so good, right? Uh, I like the fact that she can heal herself after, you know, activating. Unlike, you know, I had this conversation already, but unlike Zhao, you know, Zhao activates and he loses all that HP, you need somebody to heal him. Unlike that, she can heal herself. She literally just goes in and if you run her with an energy battery, that's over with. You're going to get, you're going you're gonna to be a monster, really. I'm telling you, like, Albedo and, uh, Albedo and Hu Tao might be a really good comp. And I'm, we're going to go over team comps for Hu Tao really soon, but that will be for another video. Anyway, guys, let's go over her, um... Actually, did I go? Yeah, let's go over her uh, passives, which is different. It's very different because the, her first passive basically supports the team. As you can see, imposing after the end of Butterfly Dance state, the critical strike rate, uh, the critical rate basically of the characters in the team, excluding Hu Tao, is increased by 12% for 8 seconds. So basically, you're gonna make your whole team's crit rate go up by 12%. And that right there is extremely good i wish it applied to hutao but it doesn't sadly it applies to the team only which can set up things for you know sub dps or anything of that nature up to you but i wish that's i seriously wish that applied to hutao and also we have the blood stroll fire now this also applies to hutao because of the fact that say for example you have like 60k hp right and then you use the you use your activation you use your elemental skill you do the activation to take 30 percent of your hp now you're below 50 percent hp right once you're below 50% HP, you're going to get that attack increase, attack increase because of how the activation works. And then you're also on top of that, if you have your elemental burst, you can do your elemental burst, which is going to do low health skill damage. And then you're also going to have an increased 25% pyro damage bonus because of her passive right here. As you can see, when Hutao's HP is equal to or less than 50%, her pyro damage bonus is increased by 25%. So this character be, can be played in so many ways. You could be play, you could play her normally with, the, you know, not losing any health at all. You could play her on low skill damage where she literally becomes a super saiyan or super saiyan god and literally just destroys everything. So I feel like definitely this is very, very a fun unit in my opinion for the fact that what she can do. You could just go low HP and be like, oh, I'm mad now. <laughs> and you just pop off, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's definitely really, really fun. But in my opinion, who should you, who should you get considering that, you know, Ganyu is going to be an insane unit as well. But Hu Tao is also going to be an insane unit. I feel like definitely... This is about preference, but if I was a free-to-play player, I would go ahead and consider everything that Hu Tao can do first. And yeah, you should think about it, right? Because the fact that she has a lot of crit damage, right? Yeah, you can you you on Ganyu, you have like I'm telling you, you if you have the four-piece blizzard straight set, you literally have tons of crit rate, right? And then plus Ganyu's passive. And then you have tons of crit damage because of her ascension stuff, right? Now you think about that, you're like, wow, I'll be critting all the time. That's guaranteed basically, right? But you also have to think about this, you have all this crit damage on this character right here. You can build a crit rate build if you have it ready, right? You could build a crit rate build for your Tao, right? You have tons of HP that makes up for your uh, attack, low attack. You have tons of crit damage to make up for your low attack. That adds up, because I, like I said, she's based off max HP. The more HP you have, the more damage you're going to hit for once you go into this activation right here, which is called her butterfly leads to life, or, you know, the butterfly dance, right? So, I feel like definitely, in terms of uniqueness... Hutao wins this for the fact that she she has a transformation, she can heal herself, and she has regular skill damage, and she has low HP skill damage. And that, that makes this unit way more viable because, like I said, if you go low health with your girl Ganyu, you're just going to go low health. That's, that's simple as that. You go low health with her, 
you're going to do tons of damage. That's that's the difference between these characters. That's I also feel like Hu Tao, every character they release, but every character they release is going to be different, but at the same time, looking at Hu Tao, she's too different. Like, the fact that she can do what she can do, be a DPS, as well as heal herself, is absolutely insane and mind-boggling to me, right? So I definitely feel like, for sure, she is very unique, and I feel like this character is what you should save for, for the fact of everything you can do with her, the regular attack damage, the low HP skill attack damage, the healing, the debuffs, the passive to give you increased pyro damage, you can even buff your team's crit rate. Like, I feel like definitely that would be insane, but at the same time, Ganyu and Hu Tao would be an insane comp. For Ganyu being support, or support DPS, and then we have Hu Tao that will be, you know, main DPS if you want her as your main DPS, right? So I feel like that, that would be an insane comp for the fact that she increases crit rate on her uh, passive right here, as you can see, increases the crit rate of the team for 12, 12%. And then at, that's going to be added to the 40% you're going to get from using the four piece Blizzard Trader set. And then you're going to be using, you know, the charge level two, which gives you in, it inflicts in cryo. So it gives you 20%. And then her passive, as soon as you do the second frost, flag, it gives you another 20%. So it's 40% plus 12%, 52%. But if you want to also add on the other 20%, if you freeze the enemy, right, you're going to get an additional 20%, which means you're going to have 72% crit rate. Just not even from a build, just from literally, literally from building the team. Well, it is from a build, but it's not like from a main stat is what I'm saying. You're not getting this crit rate from a main stat. You're getting this crit, you're getting this crit rate from a build as well as a team comp, right? So I feel like definitely 72 is insane. If you have, if you have double Cryo on your team, you have another 15 increased additional crit rate. So I 50% increased additional crit rate. So I feel like definitely that is insane. Ganyu is a sniper. Ganyu is someone who can crit a lot, and for the uh, she also is a cryo unit, which is really unique for the fact that in our game our cryo units aren't on the you know they're not the best. They're not as good as they can be. So this will probably be our first first cryo unit that's absolutely insane. And yeah, that's really about it for her. But Hu Tao. Like I said, is a unit of very, very complex and beautiful structure for the fact of what she can do. So I feel like definitely you should prioritize Hu Tao. Because like in terms of which character is unique, which character might do more damage. I feel like definitely Ganyu will compete with Hu Tao for the fact that her crit rate is going to be high. And if you have a really good crit damage build, gold artifacts, you could definitely scale extremely high. But Hu Tao can as well for the fact she has a lot of crit damage. If you build a crit rate build on her with substats of crit damage, she could also be extremely, extremely viable. And the fact that she increases her own attack and then does the low HP skill damage will also make her probably hit way more than Ganyu for that fact. So for sure, they're both to be taken in consideration. But who I feel like you should save for is Hu Tao. Hu Tao is more worth it in my opinion. So uh, definitely save your problem gem, save your pity. Because she is a unit that's going to be so, she's going to be meta changing. We thought that Zhao would be meta changing. Well, this this actually switched up the game. This is like a Zhao mixed with a like a like a healing unit. Like it, it's like a two in one Zhao really. It's like extremely extremely good in my opinion. I feel like she, you're gonna benefit more from her and her you know her versatility. How fun she's gonna be to play. How good she looks. It's gonna be extremely good. I know Ganyu looks extremely good to you guys. Y'all like the cocoa goat milk, uh, but. Hu Tao is who you should be saving for free to play players. But that is my opinion. You know, everybody has their opinions. If you want to save for Ganyu still, Ganyu does come the 15th of this month, January 15th. She is going to be launched. So we have two weeks exactly. So you have two weeks to think about this, whether you should you want Ganyu or whether you want Hu Tao. But in my opinion, you free to play players should save for Hu Tao. That is just my raw opinion. But anyway, guys, it's really about it for this video. I just want to let you guys know that. And yeah, so definitely save for Hu Tao. That's all I'm going to say for you. If you have something else planned, if you have somebody else you want to say it for, that is fine because you can do that. So anyway, guys, go ahead and say for who you want. But if you are if you are going by my opinion, if you're going by my advice, say for who Tao, guys, because she's going to be worth it. Trust me. And that is really about it. So thank you for everybody who came out to watch this video. And I hope this did help you for the people that are still, you know, stuck on Ganyu and then stuck on Hu Tao because I know that some players are, you know, not even considering Zhao, probably y'all are probably just considering Hu Tao and Ganyu. So I understand y'all are simps. I mean, y'all are, you know, you're very focused. <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's really about it for the video. Thank you for everybody who came out to watch this. I hope this did help you. And if it did, make sure you smash the like button down below. Join the subscribers on the grind to one that no, 2,100, baby. Oh my God, y'all are insane. Thank y'all so much. And also comment down below what you're going to do, what you think will be the best choice for you. So that is really about it. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.